Sounds good. Okay. So welcome everybody to the third week. What is it? Yeah, sort of the third week. <laughs> the, before, the second week, I guess, of January of 2021. Update. I have already run out of motivation. Um, all of my New Year's resolution juice has been three days fresh out. I uh, can't wait for next Christmas. <laughs> joking well that's most of what I'm hearing from students is that um, it's already gone and let me tell you something about motivation it is the most fickle thing in the world motivation lasts a minute and the rest of it is the slow trickle of discipline um, and and it, it, there was a quote that I found recently and I want to read it to you a generation that cannot endure boredom will be a generation of little men, of men undo, of people, little people, of people unduly divorced. Is that how you pronounce that? Unduly? Divorced from the pro slow process of nature, of men in whom, of people, in whom every vital impulse slowly withers as though they were cut flowers in a vase. So what, what it's saying is that when you get bored of the process and you quickly sever yourself from the process because you were bored, you never gave enough time for the development to set in. It was never enough time. And a lot of artists have to deal with the lesson of impatience when uh, jumping into the world of getting good, getting better, of having professional looking work. They forget the massive factor of time. Now there's efficiency, efficient teaching, and that's something I like to do. I like to say, screw time, let's see how much we can work with the human brain, because the human brain is an amazing thing. So screw time in the sense that, you know, oh, it'll take you five years or 10,000 hours. No, that's it's like the worst possible scenario, and the person still got good, um, but made all the mistakes to get there, mistakes they didn't even have to make, versus my process, which is study the form naked and then dress it up with subject later. But that's still, quali the, the quality of time is still part of that. And time is still a factor. So a generation that cannot endure boredom will be a generation of little people. And there is so much boredom in the learning process. Um, and the word boredom, I like it because it's not holding back. It could say a generation that cannot, cannot endure the passage of time or something like that. But instead, the, the writer said boredom. And I think that's a nice little cut. Because whether you admit it or not, you're bored of art, you're bored of the process. And the process is enjoyable, but there is boredom in there, definitely. Not so much boredom um, while you're having fun, but the idea that you will be bored should you start the painting. Uh, that's a big one. Um, so if you've already fresh out of your New Year's Eve juice, it was just a really, uh, it was like a, a best of written concept for us to organize our time by so we could make it to our doctor's appointments. New Year's Eve made no actual physical difference in your life. And New Year's Day made absolutely no physical difference in your life. When it comes to matters of state and all of that, yes, absolutely. We are finally done with some horrendous things that we've been dealing with for the past four years. So yes, it's a new year in that regard, but you're still the same bored individual. So <clears throat> enjoy that boredom is basically what I'm saying because it's here to stay for the next 300 or some odd days, 350 days, um, and and it's it's here to stay. So what what's the difference between you today and you next year this time? Well, you're going to be better. You, know, you, you won't remember the hours that you toiled. You won't remember the hours. Do you ever remember the bad workouts? No, you just reap the benefits of, of your workouts. You just look good in those jeans. You just look good in that dress. So you don't remember the bad workouts that hurt so much you just wanted to cry. You just don't remember them. Just like you won't remember the boring hours you spent or the excruciating brush strokes or the annoying form studies that were so, bo so bland and annoying. You just wanted to poke your <laughs> poke your eyes out with your pen, <laughs> but um, 
But I promise you don't remember the bad studies. You only just reap the benefits of doing those studies. So today I'm going to take a look at some very basic tasks that, or, or skill sets, tasks, task list for benefit for improving your skill sets. Um, basic bread and butter skills you need to have to draw good. Um, I don't really have any, you know, big uh, sweeping changes to make today with regards to critiques or or illustrations that are fully done or masterpieces that were attempted too early for me to correct or light environment or some cool light effect. Today I'm just going to teach you how to blend. <coughs> All right. Um, so forget your New Year's resolutions because you never had any if you already lost them. Um, they happen, you know, inspiration happens at its own time and the universe follows no calendar. Uh, so try to instead imagine it, just as a reference point, again, just using it as a matter of, of uh, organization of your of your day to day. This next year, this time, are you going to be that many more hours invested? Boring hours, boring. Call it what it is, or with or with you know, like what like a handful of hours you could have done in a week had you had something other than motivation. And what is it? What is the thing that is there once motivation is gone? What is it? Who can guess what word it is? So today I'm going to be taking a look at this piece, which is a polygonal form, it's like a planar head type uh, discipline. That's right, discipline. I'm um, sorry, I'm just fighting, I'm battling, I'm, I'm wrestling with my office chair at the moment. All right, so, oh God, there's so many noises in my table. <clears throat> so, uh, first and foremost, I can't critique this without mentioning that the, the light environment is abysmal. Um, so I'm going to just try to fix that. Meaning that the object is bright, but the background is dark. Why? Why isn't it the other way around? Why is the background so susceptible? Why is the object so susceptible to receiving light, but the bigger object in the room is so incapable of accepting that same light? Right? So that's why I say always make the object darker than the background because most often than not, the background is the bigger object with the bigger, with the bigger, um, you know, with the, with the higher, bigger planes receiving the light and the higher chances that it'll, it'll receive that light. So I'm just uh, going back and forth between either to create a nice healthy separation between the two so we can explain where all the light on the face is coming from. So we'll talk about why this piece isn't that good, what's causing this issue, um, you know, so, so many so much anxiety in just planing the face. I mean, you don't you look at this anxiety here. Look at this anxiety here. Look at these brush strokes. That's all. If I was a doctor and this was an x-ray, and I am a doctor of art, um, <laughs> I'm your doctor. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, I, I this, this is just an x-ray of your psyche while you're studying. You're like, should I, you know, what, what am I doing? Like, should I even be doing this? Like, I know I'm supposed to be doing this, but I'm like having zero fun. Um, so like, okay, here's my reference. I'm going to copy. I'm going to put a shadow here in the general area. I know there needs to be, but like, you know, I'm, I'm just like the other side is not the same. So like, do I worry about that? Do I care about that? Um, I'm just going to follow. And you did a lot of good choices when it comes to the light. So the lower half of the face is much darker than the upper half, but then you've got like stuff like this where the chin has exited the light, um, the, the neighborhood of light, the, the light restrictions in its area and the mount and the lower lip, and you've just given us a completely skewed um, set of rules, right? So obviously there wouldn't be any similar, in fact, the lower lip is brighter than the upper lip or the area that is supposed to be receiving more light. That is not possible. Um, unless the light is directly on the camera, which it isn't because the shadow of the nose is pointing down. That's a fan favorite or the artist favorite is to have this little nose shadow, which you guys hate following the, the, the nose shadow rules for every other part of the face. So let's make some corrections, okay? So I made the first correction already. I need to put on my glasses. All right, um, so I'm gonna just darken the lower part of the lips. I'm gonna start, start talking about, um, you know, I'm gonna start talking about what it means to blend. And that's one of your most important skills to have, is your ability to move the values around. 
uh, it's it's one of them meaning that it is still very very um, justified to spend time learning how to designate value on plane so study the geometry study the uh, study the, um, uh, the the ladder of light from the brightest point on the on the object to the darkest lowest point on the object study the mapping with arrows like I show you in that video how to do lighting or how to lighting um, just search up a Sirac lighting is the one with all the form studies on the cast shadow of the nose should not be the same value as the core shadow of the nose in fact the core shadow of the nose is too dark as well and the reason that is, is because the cast shadow of the nose falls on a reflector, falls on a, a surface receiving light, which is the upper lip. It's like a snout sticks out, catching a lot of light. Um, and then I'm going to brighten the sides of the nose a little bit more. So the anxiety I was talking about earlier is that your values um, that you laid down, your brush stroke, I don't know what brush you're using but it's it's the wrong brush for sure if I'm seeing the edges of the brush here it's some kind of circular brush God forbid it's it's probably one of these you know you're probably using one of these if you use these if you use one of these um, let me say this without being rude uh, no I'm gonna go ahead and be rude it's probably the most noob thing you could do it's probably the most noob, like little artifact uh, that you leave behind of your noobness on your drawings. The fact that you're not even, you know, trying to, uh, to, to bring in blocking brushes, just at least a blocking brush, just something that has a bit more strength to it, something that leaves behind a clean silhouette. So that me it means that when you're laying down a value per area, your hand jitter isn't going to accidentally leak that value into another area. Um, this is just a messy, we, we, there's no finesse and blocking. No one's expecting you to get some kind of beautiful brush strokes and blocking. So don't use brush strokes that are, that have more to them than a straight edge. And that's why we use blocking. Blocking isn't a finesse brush. So that's why I picked my plain blocking versus my dry oil. Like I, this one, yeah, it's got more finesse and it's got a strong edge, sure, but it's got texture to it so it's attempting to introduce to you some flaw and flaw is finesse kind of just that that painterly look but even then I do block with my with my blocking brush especially if I repeat back and forth it'll just give me a straight line so even in my the generation of my brushes I, I remembered that you need to have a nice clean edge when blocking so if you're using shit like this not even for blocking it's just like the worst brush you could use I don't know why some people do it some people, yes, they use it just like this, no pen pressure, no, uh, no, no, no transfer uh, size, pen pressure and transfer value, value, value transfer or, or, or size jitter, like there's no shrinking of the size as you press the, press the, butt, the brush. Um, shit, I can't talk. Um, so let's, let's talk about how this blocking brush could have been, could have helped you better. So this, this area of the lower, uh, where I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use my blocking brush, which is my um, my number two from the dry oil set. You don't have to use my brushes, but as you can see, these are the ones I'm using in the video, and they're available in my store and they're on sale. <coughs> and I'm gonna get rid of this highlighter on the brow bone because we're not trying to represent a masculine brow bone we're trying to just shave off the brow bone so that it's a little bit more of a globe a little bit more of a dome and we represent that by the temple value the temple core shadow block here that kind of curves into and on the area where we would have the eyebrow arc so that's where we we, we create that first cut line if you're if your uh, eyebrowless portrait looks sad you're doing it right so if it looks like it was watching the news lately, check the date of the video to make sure that you understand what I'm <laughs> referencing. <laughs> if you, if this character is watching the news, right, they would be very sad. I mean, they should be look. They should look anyway. Um, so there it is. It looks sad. Why we want to do this is because the core shadow of the eye socket 
is in, in this type of shape. It's in this really, really low hanging downturn shape. When we bring the eyebrow in later, that gets lifted back up. But if you're trying to do what the eyebrow does and raise that core shadow up, you're putting black where there shouldn't be. This whole area of the eyebrow bone is bright. Not up here, no, down here. All right. And then the reason why I would use a blocking brush that is like, you know how mine is upright? It looks, the brush itself looks upright. Um, so basically my brush looks upright, right? It's not leaning any one way or another. Um, this one is the same. It kind of goes upright that way. I can use it this way or that way. It's not in pointing. This one is kind of tilted off. Again, I'm trying to represent flaw. So it generally looks the same. That's because I want to use it to block in areas with one long strong brush stroke so i can use it on either side of the face <clears throat> that's why i built my brushes like this meaning i can just jump back one brush stroke here one brush stroke there and so that's why i use a blocking brush because i know for sure that i'm going to be able to create the same effect on either side and then just, just by the gesture of my hand, just the muscle memory, and be able to make a symmetrical brush stroke. So for those who wonder how do I make it symmetrical on both sides, it starts with the brush. And then it leads into your, your actual hand gesture. So you see how from a distance I can block with a square brush easily. Whereas from a distance you're using those circular brushes, they're going to show every little jitter that you do. Every little jitter is going to interrupt the edge. And when you're blocking, you block for the edge. And then another thing is that it's just a nice clean separation between values. I'm encouraging that here. For the brush stroke, for the cheeks, try to show how it's a curve. All right, your lines should help generate the contours as well. So your, I mean, your edges should help generate the contours. The Cupid's bow is a bit strong. It looks like an old person's Cupid's bow. So Google an old face and a young face and compare. The younger face Cupid's bow looks very perky. It looks very, it's a very small Cupid's bow range. It kind of just sticks to the, the septum size. And then the older the, 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 the person gets, the more kind of wide the Cupid's bow is and the more thin the lips are uh, versus a thicker kind of lip at the top with a smaller cupid's bow or a tighter cupid's bow I guess. Alright, so I'm gonna try to push that. The, the mouth is a bit wide and looks very old. So I'm just trying to look at the eyes. Try not to take away too much of what you're drawing. So I just shrunk the mouth a little bit and I'm gonna increase the size of the eyes and then we'll get into the blending which is the skill, but I really can't talk about blending without talking about like a healthy, uh, a blocking plate on which to blend. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if the eyes are a little bit lower, a little bit higher from where they were. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, you know, groundbreaking changes. Okay, I'm flipping the canvas. Oopsie. Brush down. And I'm going to try to just supplement what you've got here. All right, so so blending. Um, the smudging brush is how I blend. The reason why blending equals smudging, so write that back to me, blending equals smudging. And the reason that is is because that's exactly what we're doing when we're doing traditional. When you, when you think that blending is... Um, is, is done in any other way other than manipulating the areas where they where the two come in it's just not you know that we get smudging is synonymous with blending there's really no other way to do it so if if blending to you is this if this is your blending so this is what I mean when I so you've got two values let's say it's this value and this value if this is how you blend so you got low opacity you zoom in a little too much because you're a student and if this is how you blend all the time in all your art, what does this look like? Let me compare it to the other side. 
where we've got our smudge brush doing exactly what we would do with our little smudger traditionally is it called a tortillion or tortillon or whatever tortilla um look at what it does it automates the scatter that you would have and it's just all it's done it's not brought in new paint it's just blended the two it's obviously it's a couple brush strokes it scatters, doesn't drag, which is not possible. There's no equivalent for dragging. And I mean, unless you have a wet brush and wet paint, obviously there's an equivalent to it, but I'm saying the equivalent of scattering your smudge brush. So there's this blending, which is dragging, and I have to raise that all the way up. And you just keep doing this over and over again until something is blended, until the pixels are so confused where, where start and finish is that you've got this. So you got three ways of blending. You've got you've got scatter. Oops. Now am I using the smudge brush still? Obviously. Okay. You've got scatter. You've got drag. Both have been used with smudge tool. And then you've got actually painting in with soft brush. All right, so repeated, painting with soft brush. This is ugly because it's this back and forth add, adding of paint. You're constantly bringing in paint and constantly going back and forth to create. And hopefully by after reducing opacity, you will get this really clean transition and you just keep packing on the paint. So you had layer one and layer two, and then you had layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six. By the way, brush brush size never changes. And you just keep packing on the paint and the paint just keeps piling up. And yeah, it's digital, you're not really noticing it, but there's something piling up and it looks messy and dirty and you can start seeing tracks of it in the navigator, areas that you didn't see. Here, this took the data you already had and then created a second set of values in an area that was scattered. All right, so this area was taken and put here. This area was taken and put here. This pixel was taken and put here. This pixel was taken and put here. And then you had this really, really even distribution of the pixels underneath. And this one, this one, well, let's talk about this one. This one grabbed this one by the hair and pulled it there and grabbed this and pulled it by the hair and pulled it there. And it just kept going back and forth. And it's just this individual, this back and forth. There's only one motion this way and that way. Whereas this one, you can do all kinds of motions. You can move the scatter brush to blend. You can move the scatter brush up. So remember, capacity, the strength is low. If you press hard, you'll get more blending. But you can move the brush this way. Oh, whoopsie, I forgot to change the brush. That's my number four. You can move the brush this way and it'll scatter. Like a little more. You can move the brush this way and it'll scatter. This way, this way. It's so clean. And this is why I tell you people, start using the smudge brush on scatter. And scatter just means the brush set. And if you want to use this one, it's available in my store as well. <clears throat> so... And again, it's a whole set. It's not just a single brush. So it's not like I'm selling one brush for $9. It's an entire set. And then the entire um, bundle of the sets is also on sale. So uh, when you're talking about which one of these is the most efficient, the most cost effective, the most uh, uh, logical to use in your learning process so that you can get studies out of the way and not make it excruciating. It's this one. I've never really dissected the benefits of different smudge styles just because I like to assume that people will naturally be drawn to smudging. One second. But um, if you guys aren't like directly in my tutoring or if you guys don't watch regular critique hours or if you you know you're just generally dabble in my channel you don't really watch a lot of you're not exposed to the benefit of scatter brush and thereby end up relying and getting really reliant on one of these two all right i know there's a mixer brush on photoshop but i'm in like 2010 mode right now or 2008 mode i'm not 
Like I don't register any new Photoshop tools. I am, I am just, I, I, I've, I've discovered a lot of tools. Yes, absolutely. But again, to make my life really effective and really quick in my life as a teacher, I've just relied on the strongest tools and worked around them. That's why I created a scatter brush to work with, smu with, with paint brush or a smudge brush and separated the painting process from the smudging process. I know in Mixer you can now also separate paint input from smudge. I understand that. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, find, you, you, I, I tried it for a while too, but someone's saying I find Mixer brush is still a mess. Um, so, it, 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 it's your choice how you want to ma manipulate the blocks. Basically, I'm asking it very passive aggressively. It's your choice how you want to manipulate the blocks that you tired and toiled for. Um, uh, you know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> there's also the fact that all you have to do per area that you're smudging and take these notes down, good note takers get free brushes from me and you can have a selection of the brushes you like. So if you need the brushes, you don't have $9 lying around and I completely understand that, especially in this time, make some nice notes, post them on the Reddit and I will, uh, and I will give you a free brush joke, a free brush joke. <laughs> I will give you a free brush stroke. <laughs> Just can walk up to my table in the in the convention, and I will draw a brush stroke over your forehead. Um, and I'll give you a free brush set. <clears throat> All right, because I was looking at this and like oh, brush stroke. All right, so the reason why the smudge brush, my smudge brush, is so awesome. First of all, there's a selection of them, and they all work the same way. They all scatter. Um, oh. Uh, they all scatter. So we've got a big one that does a big boy smudge. And it does a haze, right? There's a haze to it. And this I use this one late game just because I actually talk about it in my one of my latest YouTube videos on how I painted a portrait. And I use it to uh, blend out brush strokes that I want to look a little bit like a, a fuzzy textured mess. And then there's, of course, the strongest one. The others are just more textured. So you have a lot of texture in one of them. A lot of texture. That was my pen pressure dropping, by the way. So a lot of texture in one of them. But at least behind more texture in comparison to this one. You see it mostly when you're zoomed out. Oops. I, need a sh I don't know why I don't have a hotkey yet. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm going to use this one. And the reason why I use it, to get back to my point, is because I want to only have to change brush size when I'm talking about different fat pockets. So <clears throat> when we're looking at the fat of the, of, of the cheeks, the, the globular shape and the fat of the chin, and then the big dome of the forehead, we're using very, very large smudge brushes that are probably this big or this big. And all I have to do is shrink the size of my brush as I transition. So the brush is this big, then it gets this small, and then it gets this small, and then it gets this small. If I even have to smudge around the blocks of the eyes, most of those blocks stay intact. They're actually never touch, touched by a smudge brush most of the time. Because we want to keep as much detail as possible around the eyes. That's our focus. That's our resolution. That's where our resolution skyrockets. All right, and then over here I get back to this size. Over here, I get back to this size. Over here, I get back to this size, and maybe a little bit bigger. And the mouth is pretty close and, and, and um, a comparable size to the cheek because the mouth is almost always over blended. So it should be. You compare that to the nose size, which is very, very, you know, significantly smaller. Sometimes I even use a size like this for the mouth just because I don't want to use lose the ge geometry. Um, but you can see how the forehead is technically this size as well because it's a transition. So the feathers end of this part of the smudge brush is actually touching this area right here. So let's start smudging. All right, so I'm just gonna grab my smudge tool and then just start blending. And remember, I can move in any direction I want. There's no drag. Nothing like that. I've increased the size of the brush. And I'll try to keep telling you, you know, when I increased it, when I didn't, I increased it. And I'm just starting to slowly increase it the less work I have to do. All right, 
decreasing now because I'm nearing this area and you will too also develop this muscle memory of when to shrink it. Because it's such a little area that's the smaller, the more uh, uh, diverse and the more clustered the cluster of edges, the, the smaller your brush stroke will be. And that's a really, really small size I'm using right now. Remember also your image, I'm not sure what the resolution is for this. I just like a larger image. <clears throat> the better the smudge brush will look because it'll have more pixels to mess around with. Right, I'm going to leave the nose alone because the nose is not rendered. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Let me resize the image, image size. Because at the moment the nose is in a completely different, it's in the wrong spot. Um, all right, so let's move on to the forehead. I know I jumped to the nose pretty quickly. Try to blend everything out first before you shrink your brush. Try to get everything down. So if you've noticed, if you overblock, which is perfectly acceptable, in fact encouraged, if you overblock, you will be left with only blending to do meaning. Once you're done blending, you're left with a completed painting. Mind blown? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right, so I'm smudging around here. Look at my motion. My motion just follows. I mean, I can do whatever motion I want, but my motion just follows the brow bone. I'm shrinking my brush now. Sometimes if I just want the slightest little blend, I'll decrease the strength all the way down. If you're not decreasing the strength, it's it's you're just doing yourself a disservice. Boom. <laughs> yes, you can find it on my store. Alright. And it comes in a bundle. It's not just one brush. It comes in many different brushes that I've used across my um my journey. Right. You can use smudge brush on the edges of cast shadows. Right, so I'm just a little bit over blending because obviously it's just an exhibition of smudging. It's not so much, we don't even have a face at the moment. And then I'm smudging around the mouth. I'm going to maintain that edge in between the lips. I'm going to smudge the main cylinder value here. I'm going to smudge this out. And then continue on to the chin. My brush is shrunken in size and shrinking still. It's back up. It's mostly just I feel like I'm not doing enough work. So my hand just my left hand, which is on the open and close square bracket. That's what um, what what instinctively um, starts to increase or decrease the brush just because I feel like I'm not doing enough work. All right. And then I'll probably get soft brush and just round things off. Most of the time I do this. It's pretty zoomed in. And then start climbing up with my soft brush to round it up. One. Two, three, four. So smudge brush is not going to make you paint better. It's going to make the stuff you do, um, it's going to make the stuff that you've painted blend better together. Smudge brush doesn't paint for you, meaning it's not going to raise or decrease values. Only your paint, the data you bring in, is going to do that. Obviously, yes. But for a lot of students, that's not common knowledge. If you're a smarter student, not smarter, I'm sorry for that. It's it's if you're if you know if you're more aware, if you're more experienced, you know that you still gotta paint well. You still gotta know what values to put where. But for students who are just starting out, they're under this illusion, they've been lied to by whoever that smudging and blending is the key to better work. It's not. Over smudged stuff makes me want to puke. Over blended brush uh, stuff using the smudge brush just makes me want to just throw the art in the garbage um, because there's nothing grosser than an airbrush look 
Um, there's some that look great, and then there's some that just have absolutely no concrete form to them. Because it's just all blending and smudging and airbrushing and and it's just not it's not a good look. Alright, so the face outside of having eyes, nose, and mouth should look like this. It should be pretty nondescript. Um, Alright, so let's get rid of the eyes, nose, and the mouth. It should look a little something like this. It should be uh, out of the way. But for something so out of the way, you guys sure do spend a lot of time blending this. And it's not that it's not deserving. Absolutely, the face needs to be blended out very, very well. It needs to look realistic. But it should also be done in a way that's respective to the amount of time you're supposed to put into the face compared to the rendering hours you invest into drawing an eye. So how do you maintain efficiency while maintaining importance? And that's just find a better tool. Get better tools. Your tools should not betray you. And if you're dragging your to, to smudge or if you're painting to blend, um, it, it, again, you're not doing that when you are painting traditionally. So don't give me that, oh, that's how I paint when I'm, when I'm using oils or acrylics. No, you don't. You smudge. You get a brush that has some of the paint on either side or, or both of the paint on either side and you go back and forth, back and forth until you've blended the area. You don't bring a new stroke of paint. Let it dry. You bring a new stroke of paint. Let it dry. That's Nobody blends like this. And that first method I showed you right over here, that first set on, on, our, on our left, that is wrong. And it's not acceptable. If you're painting, if you're smudging like that, stop it. Who here smudges like that, that first method that I showed? I'm just mostly asking you guys questions so I can drink tea. People airbrush photos to get rid of imperfections usually on the face. But Photoshop has tools to get rid of pimples now, so, you know, that's like, even that has been taken care of. I'm glad I got your last year. My explanation is super helpful. Subscribe. Thank you, Mouse. So who uses the first session set? Don't be don't be scared. Just tell me. Admit it. You're mostly admitting it to yourself too. Who uses the first type and why? And who taught you? What's their name? Where do they live? Go get them. All right. Moving on. Um, another thing I want to remind you guys is just remember that the head is is in the shape of a sphere. So you don't want any of your values here to be similar to your values here. Look at that value drop. These look generally similar, right? This value looks similar to this one, but look at the difference. Look at this jump. Boom, boom. <coughs> Before, after. All right. And if you notice um, a noise that comes with my brush strokes, I put that there just because I'm happy with it and I don't really... I. I Control U and decrease the um, uh, saturation if I if I feel like it's in the way. But I I, I like the noise; it tends to add a texture too. Um, I lo love and support for your work from an old student. Thank you, Leonard. Um, me ten years ago with acrylics because they would dry too fast. Uh, me even used the round default brushes. Haha, <laughs> I got busted. <laughs> Uh, good, good. So make sure that you guys are, are aware of that and you start, this isn't just a, a brush plug, it's not me trying to sell brushes, it's me teaching you what I did in my journey that was the most efficient choice to make with regards to blending. Because I'd be sitting there sweating, face oily, pimples popping out, freaking sitting in a pool in my sweat on, the, on my chair, blending away until the, until the cows came home. And it was just not efficient. And then what was changed my art career completely is teaching and putting my um, uh, on on a screen, putting my desktop on, uh, you know, sharing my desktop with the world. Uh, that also demanded I hurry the up and just start, you know, start blending better, start working faster. So smudging is the optimal way to blend, and it's the how you get a clean, smooth face. If you're here for an eye. Um, and I, I lesson how to draw eyes. And it's not this is not the, the place for you. But look at the difference between applying more highlights at the top of the sphere and more shadows at the bottom. You see that sudden three dimensionalness. 
Don't forget about reinforcing the upper and lower half of the head difference between each other. Um, st live streaming while drawing is the most stressful thing. <laughs> Welcome to my life, baby. I will look out for the free brush stroke on the forehead. <laughs> yes, we were all dummies once. Um, uh, it's different. It's different when you're me starting with a hard round during in an age where there were zero YouTube tutorials and you guys, you know, with all your resources, you guys got no excuse. I got an excuse. I'm, 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 I'm off the hook. But you guys have all, you guys have a freaking PhD of video history for you to enjoy in my channel. <clears throat> yeah, y'all have me. <laughs> uh, just wanted to say I admire your work and dedication. I learn a lot from your content. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to write that. I appreciate it. All right, so let's move on. So that was the skill aspect you know that was the skill building lesson uh, uh do with it what you will but if you're wasting time blending in the dumbest ways i've ever seen stop it it's not good for you i'm going to do some color correction for this one something about this one is just making me uncomfortable um it's the barely visible differently painted different texture on the moths and they have no edges and no strength to them whatsoever um, it's the yellow pukey color here on the side, which is a warm yellow and it has nothing to do with the purple face. It's the patch of orange up here that also disrupts your cool value. Choose a value that you want to use. Choose a, a color wash that is either cool or, or, or warm, especially if you're doing something abstract. I'm not sure why you're attempting everything under the sun. Save it for the next piece if you wanted some cool tones. If you don't know how to balance these tones together stop using them. So the, the blue and the purple, beautiful, look great. But then you've got these browns and you're trying to just paint the skin tone. If you're trying to paint a skin tone that has all the tones in it, there should be a dominant skin tone color with moments of blue and purple. Not purple skin with moments of pure orange in it. It's not, again, it's not going to look right. So... I'm going to get rid of most of your orange patches and try to just cool them down with a value of, of, of some kind. And then you got this like burgundy mouth and then you've got some more here and there of just random warm splotches. All right, and then you need to separate the moth from what's behind it because it's it's an object on another object what kind of edge is that that's that's a that's a hard edge you never ever ever share blending so what you did was you blended and smudged you blended it as if it's a tattoo attached to her now if it was a moth that was a tattoo that was slowly turning real okay fine but that, i'm not going to use that excuse now you should have a hard edge in between so I'm going to try my best to do this. See that? So it's supposed to be that hard, that clean. And then I'll do it on the other side as well. And I know there's a shadow. I should have probably increased the size of the canvas. So I'm just using the outer color to clean up the edge. And I'll have, I have to change that yellow too. So when we have a hard edge, that's how it makes it feel like this is an object on its own and the face is an object all on its own. And I'm using soft brush because you can critique faster with soft brush, soft brush compared to like a, a textured finesse brush, which I'm, I don't have the time for while I'm critiquing. So all you smart asses saying, oh, wow, she's using a soft brush. No, she just spent half an hour talking about how not to use a soft brush. I'm on to you. All right, and then on the other side of that lasso, I'm going to start bringing in a stronger edge. Just so it looks like the moth has, it's like, you know, its own space to exist. All right, so that should help a little. 
Um, and then we've got this abysmal yellow. Yellow and purple are opposite to each other, and they look great beside each other, but they're not always going to look... It's up to taste. Some people hate when complementary colors are worn together, painted together, and some people love the pop, you know? And for abstract, that's great. It's, it's, it's nice, but one of them has to be dominant. One of them has to be strong. So I got rid of it and grayed it out, and as you can see, there's no such thing as dark yellow. It just goes into gray or pukey. Uh, pukey tone. So either make it all white and bring the attention back to this very, very abstract scene and just stick with that. You know, leave it. Leave it alone. You're going to try a pop of color, sure, but it's really going to um, it's going to take a lot more than a pop of color to save your image from the lack of edges and the generally day two, 14 day challenge looking uh, you know, feeling that this has. So let me increase the size of the brush, uh, the size of the canvas, just so it's not too blown up because I don't think I should push into. And I'm just going to start cleaning up some of your, some of your rendering here. So I'm going to lighten the cast shadow on the nose. Such a washed out scene, but you went ham on the, um, on the shadow of the nose. What's, what's causing that? Where's the, where is the lack of uh, uh, balance light. Where is the lack of bright room? She's in a white room and she's got, you know, this tiny little, no this, this dark nose that doesn't make any sense. Oh, son of a bitch. Image size. Okay. Um, for some reason, my, um, my control Z is lagging. It's really annoying. And go back. And then so I'm trying to reinforce a brush stroke here for the nose. That's clean, a nice clean blocked nose shape. So the only part of the nose that should be blocked is just the, the nostril hole itself. All right, and I'm not gonna blend yet because I wanna show you guys what I'm doing with the blending. And then I'm just going to keep blocking around the upper part of the mouth. I'm going to give a blocking value for the lower half. Just because it looks like the shadows are generally moving in this direction. Um, and then for the eye socket, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to strengthen your eye socket value here. I, I'm, this this table is actually gonna make me have an anxiety attack in the middle of class. I'm sorry, I've just been so busy. I haven't been able to replace my table because it's a whole project to get a table and laminate it. Um, so you see, I'm just trying to reinforce the most important edges on the face, and these are them: the nostril. Oh god! If I could just line it with felt, but I don't think it's the table that's making the noise. I think it's the stand that's... Alright, another really important edge to reinforce. And then there's nothing wrong with going a little bit darker but maintaining your purple for the lash line. Okay, and just look at how much we're seeing now emerge from the face. Another important edge, though it's pretty blurred sometimes, is this around the eyes. And you can keep this side desaturated. It feels like the moths brought in the desaturation. Or, um, you know, the moths are kind of moving away or leaving her and she's like getting back her sense of self. Maybe I'm projecting. I don't know. <clears throat> That is still a bit too yellow for, you know, such a pale scene. I'm just going to go ahead and use white. Ugh, what the heck is going on here? Feathers down. I'm just going to use yellow. Fuck that. Oh, it was the color moth. All right. And then just throw that in there. And then just block in all of the areas of highlight. It seems like her face should be wet. Um, I'm going to use a block on the side of the nose. Yes, I'm using pure white. 
and I'm blocking in pure white. Top of the cylinder for the mouth. Bridge of the nose, top of the nose here. Try to get rid of that value sharing we've got. A little bit up here. And then, um, this is just the new saga, you know? You know how like every year we have a different saga? This is the saga of the creaking table. And then I'm gonna define the side of the nose by using a brighter value. The edge is revealed. I'm gonna define the top of the nose to reveal we've been value sharing. So I'm just going to clean up the sides of the nose there. And give it one clean value instead of that mess. And I don't know why you guys are obsessed with adding highlights to the top of the nostril. It's really not doing you any favors. It's, it's not saving you. Because it's, um, you're trying to add definition to something that is stuck on the side. It's like giving ears highlighter values. If they're on the side of your head, why would they need that much highlighter anyway if the light can't even access them as much as the, as the, as the forehead, let's say. So you guys bring the ears out to the level of the forehead when you bring the nostrils out to the level of the, of the, of the nose bridge. This table is taunting me. It's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, have your fit in front of everybody. <laughs> and then I'm gonna use um, a shadow for underneath the nostril, the, the septum, just like that, and a shadow for the underneath the wings of the nostrils, just a slight one, again, not blending yet. And then, uh, and then I'm gonna just bring in a shadow of some kind for the lower face. Abu, Abu, I'm gonna lose my mind. All right, seems to have stopped. I just have to keep moving the table around and it'll just like reset the friction. It'll reset the atoms for some reason. Lord, give me patience. I'm trying to do your work. Lord, give me patience. All right, and I'm um, gonna just let some of this highlight bleed into the lower eyelid. And these are just some choices I'm making. I'm gonna get that kind of really, really pink value here, just on the side, keeping things analogous. And then just from looking at my navigator, I can see that we need like a, a strong cheek dimness, like a dimming the cheek value, because blush is red and red is dark. And then strengthening, strengthening another object in front of another object edge. So there's two kinds of edges only. There's the, there's the edge and there's the object in front of another. So the chin is in front of the neck and that should not be blended together. And then I'm going to just bring in something here for the eyebrows, just so they could be a bit stronger. But it's not so much an illustration critique. I just had to get rid of those bad colors. It was, it's just about showing you where, what to blend. So I'm starting off, let me forget about the eyebrows. I'm starting off with the bigger areas. And I can move my smudge brush to match the area I'm working on. And I've shrunk in the size of my brush here. Moving up into the sides of the nose and up into the, the, the eyebrows, the lower part of the eyebrows. Please don't leave this area unblended because it looks really uncanny when you guys have perfectly edged out eyebrows that look like bad, cheap microblading you got in some girl's house instead of going to somewhere professional. No offense to any estheticians that work at home. I used to do that stuff. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult you. That was just really mean. All right, and then I'm blending the, any other rogue brush strokes. All right, so please blend that, blend the eyebrows.
And like I said before in, the, in my previous video, I'm not sure how many videos ago it was, I'm going to just perfect this, uh, this cast shadow here. I'm going to grab that value and just let it go down. Um, is that if, you, if you're done smudging, in a perfect world, you don't need to smudge anymore after you're done and your painting's done. But we're all perfectionists. We like to tinker. So you can go back and just keep working on it, right? Nothing's forced you to, to just completely give up on um, anything else and, 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 and just, it's like a last call smudging. You can't do anything else after that. No, you can go back and repaint and re-smudge if an area doesn't look great. As long as your smudging is efficient, as long as you're working for fundamentals, meaning thinking about your light source and what you're doing. All right, and next I'm going to smudge the nose. I'm going to just reinforce and re-block this area so it's a very strong edge. And if you feel, hey, you know, she's looking too high res, um, I don't like, I want her to feel a little bit more ghostly, push your edges anyway, make her ghostly later. Use your Gaussian blur, whatever the hell you want. As long as your ratios are still after you've smudged in the right spot. So this will smudge more than the nose anyway had you used your ghostly filter. You understand you're still smudging something that started off sharp it will still st look sharp compared to everything else so you'll smudge in unison right so I'm smudging the lower part of the nostril that's how you make a nostril look realistic yeah, we're gonna have a timer or whatever. So lately there's been a weirdo at the parking lot of the gym and I've been trying to go early <laughs> to avoid no, like he straight up got arrested. He was like trying to break into cars. And that's like my worst nightmare, getting mugged at the gym. So I've been trying to go early. But <laughs> it's okay, I'll get mugged for you guys. <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying, it's okay. I have people walking me out. I, I, I ask some people to, when they finish, I'll finish. And then... It's okay. I'll just get a black eye for you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm swudging that lower little wing of shadow I just added. He got arrested, but I don't know if there's going to be other people trying to do this shit to, 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 you know, there's more stores there too. It's not just gym folk. All right. And then the mouth, which looks like she had a bag of salt and vinegar chips and forgot to drink water. It looks like she ran a marathon and then had a bag of <laughs> salt and vinegar chips. Yeah. Yeah, I live in the U.S. Basically, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> the salt and vinegar chips, that's me. All right, so I'm smudging the top part. And then smudging the bottom part. Basically, if the mouth, if we notice the mouth, you did a bad job. So you can still have all your shine, all your glitter, all your lip gloss on the mouth. You can still have a mouth. But if you've added texture to the mouth more than we need, too much information, it's that you've done a bad job with the mouth. All right, so I'm going to take some creative liberties and smudge, over smudge the white of the eyes because I feel like that aesthetically is on the same frequency as everything else you're doing. And I'm going to use a blue to kind of just make the eyes look a little bit milky. And I'm going to let some of that blue sit as eye shadow. This is just me doing my thing. You don't have to do it. I'm going to do it on the lower part as well. I'm going to bring in like a palish turquoise, not going too close to green. And I'm going to use it on the highlights. I'm going to get some of that pink blush and just not try to take too many creative liberties just so that I have something that's reading as normal and uh, make the mouth read as a normal mouth, meaning it's just a good old pink mouth. I'm going to leave everything on the other side of the face pretty monochromatic just because it's part of the storytelling and I'm going to let some of that pink kind of wander into the rest of the canvas, but I just don't blue okay and then another thing you could do is um, oh, 
Come on. Is probably push the white on the edges out a bit. And then select them, paste them, filter, Gaussian, blur them a bit as well. Just so it looks a bit like a dreamy kind of glow or bloom. And then I'll go back to blending just because I needed that those changes in order to know how much shine to bring in. And then I'm going to finish the forehead. Finish the mouth. And the chin. Blend off anything else. Her neck looks a bit strong, so I'm going to uh, let some hair kind of just sit that way. Uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then try to close off the canvas to like on the lower parts. I'm going to use some of that pink on the nose as well, just because I want the nose to look a little bit blushed. Not too much though, just like on the tip. And then try to bring in those highlights now using soft brush. This is detail work, so you can zoom in, but I'm going to try to do it zoomed out. And I'm just letting the values climb and stack radially, but letting them linger so that it looks like shine. And like usually shine has like a speckle that's the brightest right at the very zenith of that mountain of values. And like connecting some areas too. So connecting some areas of shine and like a little highlight shine path will make the skin look a little bit shiny as well. And letting the cupid's bow just kind of just speckling in some values just to make it look wet. And then doing the same thing with the lower lip and the folds. A little bit on the chin and then there's always a little bit of water at the edge of the mouth. And you can over blend this. I'm going to use that pretty smudge brush here and I'm just going to let it blend everything under that moth. So it's like a deliberate haze. It's a deliberate distortion. And I'm going to even let the far end of the mouth get smudged a little. And then the far part of the nostrils, just collective brush strokes distorting that half of the canvas. but we still have all of the shadow here to salvage. I do want to use some kind of contrast just because we've gotten rid of one half of the face almost. And just strengthen some of the contrast and the most important areas to have contrast, which is the eye. All right. So I hope today's class was nice. I hope you guys learned something about smudging and blending and organizing your values, respecting the blocking stage. I hope the artist here allows me to, you know, take all these creative liberties with their piece. I try not to do that too often, but sometimes we need to in order to have a successful critique hour. I forgot the core shadow of the chin. Chin has a core shadow too, don't forget it. And don't you forget it. <laughs> sure I do that zoomed out too. All right, so the before is actually small. So image, image size 2500. So before, after. So we've reblocked some areas, define the nose. You can see how dark it was. It was not matching the light environment you were pushing which was hazy, um, kind of strong, 
you know, at this stage you could possibly just uh, use some dodge tool here. Or maybe on mid-tones, so that I want to click a new one. Yep, just to make it a little bit more milky. And then, um, color. And I am, I am sorry if that offended you, if you're someone who has a blind eye or knows someone who's blind. I don't mean to make light of that um, disorder by saying milky eyes. I know that. Imagine losing your sight. What a horrible experience. Right. And then sometimes I just use the, the color on normal. That's my worst nightmare, losing my sight. And it's like, you know, how would I ever draw again? But there's people who still, you know, sorry to end off on such a sad note, but it's something our, our, some artists struggle with. And they still draw, you know? Isn't that crazy? I feel like this is too dark, but it could be makeup too. That's your choice, what you want to do before. After. Before. After. So smudging and edging are like your bread and butter. Skill building should be your, you know, part of your New Year's resolution. Yeah, that nose really was dark. Yeah, the yellow is just, what is it doing? It's just like somebody pee on the snow. You know what I'm saying? It just sometimes analogous just goes all the way, you know, just does everything you need. And let me tell you something about doing hair strokes like this. Sometimes all you need to do, yeah, do the hair strokes that you need to do. Go, ahead, go for it. Sometimes we need hair strands that are wet, that are catching the wind. Do it, do it. But blur it. All right? And it's still not a one pixel width brush stroke, so I'm not worried about that. But just blur it. Image. Uh, filter, and blur, Gaussian blur, All right? So sometimes a blurred, uh, so this is at zero, and this is just blurred. Sometimes blurred hair strands, it, it looks just fine, and is way less intrusive <coughs> to your focal point than having, you know, the, the hard-edged stuff that you had, that you guys have all the time. All right, I'm kind of running out of, like, like mental <laughs> juice so i hope today's class was helpful thank you everyone for coming please be aware that there is a current community challenge and it is something i've poured my heart and soul into writing um so check it out go to isterback.com click on the reddit icon the community challenge is pinned at the top read through it it's it's gonna be great we're gonna have so much fun revisiting an old um uh, uh challenge that we've done that we did three years ago um, uh, it's the Ancient Weapon Design Challenge. I wrote a little narrative a long time ago for it, and, and I just this this one is near and dear to my heart because it, you guys really just responded to it so well last time. So go and check it out. Uh, if you learned something today and you want to support me on Patreon, please do. There is a one dollar tier that you could use, um, and if everybody joins, we really wouldn't need any kind of. I mean, I wouldn't need to. <clears throat> promote patreon uh, continuously constantly um, if everybody on reddit joined uh, as a one dollar patron but I understand some people don't want to deal with online banking or online um, constant subscriptions or stuff like that just kind of it's a weird feeling to just have to pay something every month um, but if you are used to that if you're comfortable with the checkout and all of that you can join as a one dollar patron there are higher tiers that come with educational content but for those who want to give back in some way, $1, it's a small amount, but it goes a long way if everybody joins. If you tell everybody to join that you know, um, if you, you know, people that actually use the community, um, it would be a, a really, really appreciated by me and those who work in the community. Thank you so much to everyone who has joined. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And um, let me know what you guys thought about today's class. I do like it when you guys comment. I really appreciate it it gives me a little reading to do in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Porch Studio and the store. Uh, the, the brushes are all available on my store and they're all on sale. Okay, bye guys.